So the first movement in the daily cat stretch exercise program is called the arch and the curl. So the first action is to, on the inhale, slowly, gently press down your tailbone down into the table and feel your lower back arch up. And always do these very gently, no strain. And you never go into the pain. You go maybe toward, if there is pain there, you only go as far as is comfortable. So you're holding for maybe three seconds, and then you exhale and drop your lower back down and press your lower back into the table. And then you keep going slowly. You inhale again, press the tailbone down and arch up your lower back. And then exhale, slowly come down. Make it as slow as you comfortably can and as smooth as you can. There might be some jerking at first, but after a few times, it begins to smooth out. And once again, I'm pressing down with my lower back and I'm feeling my pelvis rise up, feeling the tailbone rise up. Then as I inhale and press my tailbone down, the pelvis comes back towards the spine. So it's, you start to sense that rocking motion in the pelvis as you flatten your lower back against the table, the tailbone rises up, and then as you inhale and arch up your lower back, the tailbone comes back down, up more closer to the spine. And start to sense that rocking back and forth of the pelvis. So you do that for a few minutes, back and forth, and always finish on a flattening of the back into the table so you don't develop a tightness in the lower back, that, that, that pressing the back down relaxes it more. That's the first one. And it's always good just to bring a little awareness into the low back area, see how that's feeling against the table or floor. The second one is to put your hands behind your head and you're going to be doing an arch and flatten again, but this time on the flatten, you're going to be raising your head and elbows up. So again, we're going to do the arch first. So inhaling, pressing the tailbone down, arching up the lower back. On the exhale, drop the lower back slowly down, press the lower back into the table, and now come up and hold for a few seconds, and then slowly, slowly down. So the first exercise helped relax the muscles in the lower back. Now this one is going to start to lengthen the muscles. Here we are arching the lower back. On the inhale, exhale, press the lower back down into the table and let that bring you up. And then slowly back, slowly, slowly back, slowly back. You can do that three to five times is good. Okay, the third one <laughs> you're on your stomach. Okay. And you're going to rest your cheek on the top of your hand. So this is going to be two parts. And bring your other arm down by your side. <clears throat> the first part, keeping your hand glued to your cheek, lift up your hand, your head, and your elbow as if you're looking over your shoulder on the inhale. And if you only go to here, that's fine. If the neck hurts, just go. In fact, if it hurts at all, just start to engage it a little bit. Just do whatever is comfortable. But it's good to always do a little something, even if you're not even off the ground. Just the initiation starts the muscles to contract. So you go up. And then slowly down on the exhale. Part two of this is to lengthen and straighten the opposite leg. And then slowly, slowly down. Okay. Now we're going to put the two together. On the inhale, 
up, hold for a few seconds, and then down. Exhale, slow, and you can make this as slow, and slow, and slow, and slow, slow, slow. So that's good to do two or three times. Three times is good, at least. And then the opposite way, see what it looks like on this side, is inhale up, and slow, 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 down. And do about three of those. Now, because if the neck hurts, and it's hard to do that head to the side up, this is an, a, an alternate way to do it, is hands on top of, hand on top of the other hand, head on, forehead onto the top of the hand, and you can do it just straight back up, a lot of times it's easier, raising one leg, slowly down. And maybe three, three times with that leg, and then the other leg. Excellent to release the muscles of the back. Great. Then we turn over. One hand behind the head. And again, an inhale. And then slowly come forward, bringing the knee towards the elbow. But you do not have to come all the way. Only if it's an ease to do it. If you only can come to here, that's fine. We just want to initiate those muscles. So it's an inhale, exhale, come forward, elbow towards the knee, hold for a few seconds, slowly, slowly back. This helps release all the muscles in the front of the body, the obliques, the rectus abdominis muscles, uh, stomach muscles, and also starts to lengthen further the muscles of the back. Now there's an alternative way to do this. <coughs> Let the one leg fall out, and on the inhale, arching your back a little bit, press your right shoulder down and your left hip down into the table, and then on the exhale, come up again. And then slowly back down, let the knee fall out again. On the inhale, press the left hip down, bring the right shoulder back into the table, pressing down, and then exhale, come up again, and slowly back. And then reverse. You can do this special way here, pressing the right hip down, the left shoulder back into the table, on the inhale, and then exhale forward. Now you could also guide yourself a little bit with this hand, but not pulling, which is helping you guide. Again, pressing the right hip down, left shoulder back, exhaling forward. Okay, then go into the side, resting your head on your arm, and being at right angles with your knees forward. You don't want your knees down, but knees up at right angles, and also your feet forward so you can just barely see your toes. Take this hand over your head, cup the ear, come back down. So this is two parts too. The first part, you're going to be bringing your foot up, straight up, but you're not flexing it. You're keeping it in line here, just like that, and then slowly down. The other part is bringing your head up and then down. So now we're going to put the two together. The foot and the head come up. Think of it like you're bringing your hip up towards your sh armpit and your armpit wants to come down over your hip and slowly down. Great. It's 
So again, inhale. It helps to press the right side of your body down into the table. To, that helps you come up higher as well. So you're tightening the left side, bringing the hip up towards the, sh the armpit, and then slow release. Releasing, this helps release all the muscles on the side. The obliques, and then this quadratus lumborum, which is a, a lot of times very much of a problem for back problems. So again, you want to do three to five of these, and then slow, slow, and slow. And then you would do the same thing on the other side. Okay, now, after that, I wasn't out of room here. You bring your arms out, like a, both arms out to the side, like a T. And I'm going to adjust the table here a little bit. Okay. Good. Now, keep one palm up, one palm down, and look towards the palm that's up. Now I'm going to reverse that and look towards the palm on my left. I'm going to reverse that and the palm on the right. That's number one. So now, as I'm looking at the palm on my right, I let my knees fall down to the left. Now I'm going to reverse again, looking at the palm up on my left, letting the knees go down on the right. And once again, reversing. Always looking to the palm that's facing up to the ceiling. And the knees are going in the opposite direction. This is a great stretch for the lower back. And actually the whole trunk. Back and forth. Now, it helps to exhale and tighten the stomach a little to bring the knees up. And then inhale down. And then exhale, tighten the muscles of the stomach to bring the knees up. That takes a little pressure off the back. So I do about 20 of these. Like one, this is one, this is two. So 20 is good, but you can vary it. You can do more or a little less, whichever you like. And do it about this speed. It's good to slower always, the better. Great. Okay. That was number five. Number six is for the feet, the knees, and the hips, and the legs. So this one's a little tricky. The first movement is you're going to start with your right foot as if you're scooping ice cream up off the floor with the bottom of your foot. It doesn't sound very appetizing, but so is that, see how that foot comes up? The knee falls out, and then you slide the foot back down. So once again, bringing the foot up, scooping up, dropping the knee out, and then sliding, this is very good for the hip, and sliding back down. That's part one. Part two is opposite. The foot comes up, the knee comes up a little bit, the foot goes out to the side as if you want the bottom of your foot, the sole, to be facing the opposite wall to go to there. And then you slowly come back. So again, it's up, turning. So you don't want to turn your hip like this. The motion is coming just from the foot. You don't want to use anything else to get you to get a little further. So here we go again. This, turning, and down. Now, when you do this, the first one, you're going to be arching up your, the left side of your lower back and turning your head to the left as the knee falls out. Back down you go. Now, as you come up the opposite one, turning the foot out to the side, your head turns to the right and your lower right back arches 